what place does judging have within the church? So there's both. I mean, there's some people that emphasize not judging to a fault. And then some people who, well, we just naturally judge each other, right? So um, in Romans 14, and both are in the Bible. So Romans 14 emphasizes not judging each other. Don't, And they're specifically talking about don't judge each other based on what you eat or don't eat and what days you think are like celebrate as holy. Um, it's basically talking about how each of us will need to stand before God and before God we will rise or fall. That uh, just we need to do according to our own convictions what we have faith for. And whatever is not from faith is sin. So, um, d you know, don't worry about the specific practices. We each just operate on our own whatever whatever we're convicted about doing before God. Um, however, in 1 Corinthians 5, Paul specifically says, rebukes them, Paul rebukes them for not judging the people within the church. And he says, you know, there's, the context here is there's a guy in the church who is sleeping with his father's wife. So maybe his stepmom. Um, and he's saying like, why are you allowing this? Not even the Gentiles allow this. What are you doing? And, uh, and he says like, remove the wicked from among you. And then he not only addresses this issue, but also addresses to not associate with an immoral person if they consider themselves a believer. So he's saying not if they're in the world, like don't bother judging the world for their immorality, but if they are saying they're a believer and they're being immoral, you need to judge that and don't associate with them. And it talks about... Um, yeah, so in verse 11, but actually I wrote to you not to associate with any so-called brother if he is an immoral person or covetous or an idolater or a rivaler or a drunkard or a swindler, not even to eat with such a one. For what do I have to do with judging outsiders? Do you not judge those who are within the church, but those who are outside God judges? Remove the wicked from among yourselves. So... And actually, we see this. So that last line, remove the wicked from among yourselves, is actually a quote from the Old Testament. So all throughout the Bible, we see God caring about pure, like having the group be pure in terms of morality and in terms of the way we treat each other. Really, that is the difference between heaven and hell. I think we have the ability to create heaven or hell on earth, and we unfortunately tend to create hell for ourselves. But one of the things that makes heaven heaven is that God does not tolerate evil. So I think from my perspective, from reading the scriptures, is we are not to judge each other based on things that don't really have that big of an impact. They're not moral issues. They're, they're just like practices that we do, but they are not moral things. They're, it's not how we treat each other, um, you know, yeah. Like, I, I have a friend who um, takes her Sabbath according to the, the stars, <laughs> like, according to the, I, I don't know how it all works, but that's how she decides when to take Sabbath. Cool, great. Um, it, so it doesn't really matter. I have, I have friends that think it's fine to eat, um, pork and shellfish. I personally don't want to eat pork and shellfish. I have friends that think the vegetarian diet's the way to go. Like, fine, whatever. I mean, we all stand before God, and um, so we do according to our own faith. And so that's fine. But when it comes to moral issues, that is where we are to judge each other and not allow evil and corruption in the camp and so it also talks about the way of the bible talks about the way of addressing that uh, i forget where it is offhand but it might be matthew 18 maybe um, jesus says you know if someone sins against you confront him if he doesn't repent take a few others who have also experienced his sin in that way so you have multiple people 
addressing this in this person, like, yes, you have this issue. If he still doesn't repent, bring it before the church. If he still doesn't repent, then no longer consider him a believer. And what I think that might look like with bringing it before the church is the church announcing to everyone, hey, this person here is unrepentant, by the way. Beware of them. And and then Paul says in 1 Corinthians 5 not to associate with them. But then there are other places that talk about if they, when they, hopefully, when they repent, uh, to bring them back. And if they, so, and that's how God is with us. When we do, when we sin, when we walk in wickedness in whatever way, if we come to him and admit what we did and ask for forgiveness, he is faithful to forgive us. And we see this over and over again throughout the scriptures in the Old Testament and the New Testament, where when a repentant sinner comes to him, he welcomes them back. And repentance does not mean just saying sorry. It actually means changing your ways. And the most important part of that, I would say, is asking God to help us change our ways because it we can't we can't really change ourselves on the inside through our own effort and um, through our self-control, self-discipline. I have tried that. It does not work. So we really need God to change us and we need to come to him and ask him to change us. But my point is, is that let's not judge each other on issues that do not have to do with morality and how we treat each other. And let's do judge each other on issues that have to do with morality and how we're treating each other because we want a a pure, you know, loaf of bread as Jesus, the analogy Jesus uses. And then actually Paul uses that same analogy in 1 Corinthians 5 as well that we want to remove the wicked from among us. We don't want to tolerate evil. Tolerating evil is not a loving thing to do, despite what our culture says. Um, So, yeah. So, I mean, it's we also want to do it in a loving way, of course, and in in a humble way, and not from a place of, like, pointing the finger. I'm, like, I mean, none of us are better than each other. We're, we really are just wanting to create a environment that is as much like the kingdom of God as possible. And so we want it to be a space where there is love, peace, joy, you know, all the things that, um, that are part of who God is. So I hope that we will judge each other in the right ways. And, um, and I would say that the judging each other is first of all bringing each other just keeping each other accountable and bringing each other back to God and I mean God even well he told me this personally that the key to experiencing the kingdom of God is repentance like what do you do when you're confronted with something do you dig your heels in and defend yourself or do you repent and turn back to him? So anyway, some things to think about um, on both sides, whether you're being confronted or whether there is evil amongst us that we need to confront. I mean, it's really hard to do that. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it actually reminds me of that story where in the Old Testament, I forget the characters' names, but they they were going to battle destroyed the city god told them to not take anything as plunder and this guy took stuff as plunder and then the whole camp started um i forget if they were getting sick or what was happening but it was because of this one guy had took stuff for himself and hit it and killed him and then the disease in the camp stopped and it, imagine, it would have been so hard to kill this the person who had um, stolen the plunder. But that was, that was what it took to expel the wicked from among them. 